Welcome gamers! This time I'm going to do something a bit different. No playthrough, no playthrough yet. I'm planning to do a playthrough of Cabo, but um, I cannot do this alone because, yeah, it deals with uh, hidden information. So um, I will make a playthrough, but that can take a while when I meet my Cabo playing partner again. So this time I want to introduce you to this game. Why? Because I think it's awesome. I don't know when it was released. I think it's like four years ago and um, I played it a lot and it just doesn't get enough attention uh, from, from everyone. So this is Cabo or Cabo, Cabo. I don't know how you to pronounce it. This is all you get. A nice little green box and a lot of cards. There are the rules on oh, a card and two pages so it's very easy to explain and some information about the contents and a nice little card that says designed by and it shows a website. Yeah. Okay, what is Cabo? Cabo is basically a card game and it's one of those games you can really teach within five minutes and if it's as addictive for you than it is for me and a lot of other guys in my playing group, wow, then you'll play the heck out of it. We did, I do, I still do. So what do we have here? We have cards with very interesting and unique graphics. Personally, not my taste, but Others love them, so this is just an example. And these cards have numbers from zero. Let me see if I can find a zero. Ah, there's a zero somewhere. Here's zero, the unicorn. Up to 13. No 13 out yet, just believe me, it's up to 13. Each number is there four times except for the 0 and the 13, which are two times each in the deck. So two zeros, two 13s, and four times each of 2 to 12. That's all you need to know, and we'll talk about these uh, special abilities later. What's the game about? <laughs> well, usually when I ask someone, do you want to learn a new game, I got something for you. I ask him, can you memorize four numbers? Five would be better, but four is necessary. And most people say yes, but it's not that easy. This game can be played, uh, by the way, from two to four players. If you add another deck, it can be played uh, up to eight players. I played it two, three, or four, but 90% of the time two player, and it works awesome with two players. It's a really great couple game, I'd say. So let's say we have player A here, player B here. What happens? At the beginning of the game, each player is dealt four cards and we don't have any hand cards. So they are there dealt in front of the player, in front of him on the table, face down. He doesn't know which card he'll get. In the middle we have a drawing pile and the first card of a discard pile. So draw pile, discard pile, player, uh, whatever, A and B. The order of these four cards is really up to the players. You can place them like just in a straight line or like this. It's just, I'm placing them like this in a, in a two by two square. But once you decided for a card order, you are not allowed to change it, move the cards around, swap them, flip them or whatever. So let's just say I'll place them like this. Then each player before the game starts can look at two of his cards, only two. So let's say here's a 10 and a 3 and a 7 and a 1 and of course the players need to uh, memorize them. The goal is to have the lowest total value when you sum up your cards. So at the moment this is 8 plus something, okay? And this is like 13 plus something. As soon as you think you have a lower total value, 
Um, and think you can win with this, you can call Cabo, I'll come to that later. So this is the main goal. And um, well, this is how you try to achieve it. Players are playing um, in turns and the player whose turn it is can either take the card, the top card from the discard or draw a card from the draw deck and have a look at it all secretly, of course. This is a two, by the way, okay? Then he can decide. If he doesn't like the card, he can just discard it. Turn over. Pretty easy. Or if he likes the card, like a two, which is definitely lower than a seven, and we are looking for low values, he can secretly, without revealing it, place it in a place of one of his cards and discard the other one. He could either take, you know, one of the cards he knows, like now, he just lost five points, which is great, because he's looking for low points, or, well, replace one of these cards he doesn't know, but then it could be that it's, that here we have a very low card, a very valuable card, like a zero or whatever, and when he discards it, the next player can take it. Because, um... It doesn't matter if the card is drawn from the draw deck or a discard pile. Um, if this player likes the 7, and there could be reasons for it, um, he can just take it and replace it. Like for the 7 to drop by 3 points. Of course, it's you have to know your 4 cards and it's all, sometimes it's important to remember what the other guy has at least his lowest card. So this player knows this player has a 7 here. Then we go for this, because this part is kind of easy. Now there are the, the special rules that are really great. Um, first of all, if you take a card from the draw deck or, or uh, from the discard pile and replace one of your cards, you could also replace several cards but they have to be the same value. That's uh, an option to get rid of some cards, to drop the number of cards from 4 to 1 if you want to. I've seen that happen. So let's say this player has a 7 here, we know that, and another 7 here, I don't know what it is, and he says, okay, I'm drawing an 8. An 8 is lower than a 7 plus 7, so 14. So he just discards these two cards and replaces them, and of course now it's wrong, he's wrong, but usually he discard the two uh, seven. So that would be legal. And he reduced the number of cards, and with this the number of um, points, and the number of cards he has to remember, so this is a very good trick. You could also do this with three or four cards of the same kind. Okay, let's say I got the four fours and I draw two. I take the two, place it here, and discard the four fours. So, this is one uh, one of these rules that makes the game very interesting. Then we have um, three card effects on three on three different number cards, and one card is the peak card. The eights are the peak cards. When you draw, and only when you draw a card from the draw deck. You can, instead of just discarding it or exchanging it with one of your cards, discard it to use its ability. And the ability peak lets you peak, let's say it's this player's turn, on one of your cards. Okay, just have a look and, uh, well, then you see you got a 12, which is pretty high and you want to get rid of it, of course. So this is a way to get known your other cards, but this is a very uh, difficult way because you have to wait for the aids. There are other ways like swapping them and changing them. Okay, the next effect we have is the spy. Again, it can only be used if you draw it from the draw deck and immediately uh, discard it. Spy means you can have a look at an opponent's card. Okay, without showing him, of course. So this player might choose to look at, at this card, and now he knows about a card, it's an 11, which doesn't even this player know. Okay? 
And now we come to the best and meanest card effect, which is the swap. I think you already guess it. When you draw the card and you discard it to use its effect, you can swap two cards, one of your cards with a card from an opponent, without looking at them. So, it can be that you remembered, okay, this guy placed the 7 here, I want to have the 7. So, you can kind of steal the 7 and give him your 12. Or, um, you could even take a card, one of your opponent's cards, this player had a look at this card, and he knows it's an 11, and 11 is not really worth getting, but just exchanging it with this card, means this player now knows all his cards. He didn't know this card before, but he knew the, his opponent's cards. So he just swapped these with the effect that he knows all his cards now and the opponent has a new card he doesn't know. Of course, you want to uh, remember the, you want to memorize the low cards of your opponent and steal the zeros and the ones. So that's the basic gameplay. Sounds simple, but wow, there's a lot to it. As soon as one player thinks he has a value low enough to win, I say this can be something between zero and let's say seven-ish, six, seven. He could, instead of his turn, say Cabo. That would mean he, he's going to reveal. But before he's going to reveal his card, everyone is going to reveal his card. Before he's going to reveal his card, every other player has another turn. In this case, this player can take another turn. And after that turn, players reveal their cards. And they add the value, which is of course in this example pretty high. Like 14, 18, uh, 25, 2... Um, 26. Is that right? 26. Okay. So now what happens? The player with the lowest value, with the lowest sum, writes down zero points. All other players write down their sum as minus points, as negative points. You don't score any positive points, you only score negative points. So, so this player would have 26 negative points. And if the player that called Cabo is the one with the lowest score, he's fine, he has the zero points. But if he's wrong, like in this case, this player called Cabo, but this player has the, the lowest value, the player who called Cabo gets an additional uh, minus 5 penalty points. So not only 26, but 31. Of course, in real life we're talking again like 0 to 6, or maybe if there's a surprise somewhere, 10 or 12 points. But we have to really be careful. You write down uh, your score. A round can take from 2 minutes to 10 minutes, depending on how the play evolves, and you play as many rounds until one player has minus 100 or more or less, in this case, minus 100 or less, and then that was the last round, and whoever has the least negative points is the winner. There are two more, okay, two more rules that are very interesting. One is called the Kamikaze rule, and this means if you ever reveal your cards by saying Cabo or another player said Cabo, and you have two 12s and two 13s, which is very rare and almost no one would go for this, but you can try to, and there are, remember there are only two 13s in there, then you immediately get plus 50 points. I hope I... yeah, I think I'm, I'm explaining this right. So, um, this is a way to catch up, but it's very risky. If you lose, if you don't manage to do that and have 30, 30, 12 and something else, you get just a bunch of minus points. This is a nice little rule that never happened, but the other one is awesome. 
if you in your game manage to reach exactly the minus 100 points then again you immediately get added 50 points so you go back to minus 50. So even if you're far behind, we had games where we were like, like 25 to 88, okay, and I'm the player with 88 minus points, so I'm really about to lose, I can try to get 12 points, 88 plus 12 is 100, and then I'll go back to minus 50. But this means calculating really good, because when I have 12 points, I either want to lose, let's say the other player has a lower number, he calls Cabo and I want to lose and I have 12 points, or I want to call Cabo, but if I'm wrong, I get the minus five points. So I could call, what did I say, we need uh, 12 points. If I call the wrong Cabo with seven, let's say I, this player has seven and this player has six points. He calls Cabo, he has seven points, minus points. This, uh, this player has zero points, negative points, because he has the lowest value. And this player, um, he has seven points, minus five, because it was a wrong Cabo, because he didn't have the lowest value. That's the uh, minus 12 he needs to get 200, and uh, then down to 50 again. But of course, this player knows what this player is planning. So all this together is very addictive. I was in, in hospital two years ago, I met a, a older woman there, which, whom I will do the playthrough. She didn't play a lot, not more like, you know, the, the usual 30-year-old uh, games, and uh, introduced her to this game and the Forbidden Island, and we played every night, really every night. <laughs> at least one or two full games, which includes like, I don't know, maybe 15 rounds. I counted them, but I don't want to tell you and I don't remember, it was 500 whatever rounds. So, this is Cabo, I hope you like what you see here, I hope you get this game somewhere, it's like, it's like, I don't know, 8 euros, and um, it works well with all player numbers. Um, if you have more players, like a third player, give me some four cards. One, two, three, four. Okay, they're passed down, of course. There is just more happening till your turn comes around again. So uh, you have to be more careful uh, uh, looking who has got the lowest cards. Uh, but on the other hand, people can mess with you more often till you till it's till it's your turn again. So in two player game, if you, if you call Cabo, there's only one player with one turn that can mess things up, especially if it draws a swap. Okay, I got a low value. I say Cabo, this player draws a swap and he says, okay, I know you got a low value card, so I just give you my highest card. So with a three or four player game, of course, there are more chance, just chances to draw a swap. But also, there's just more happening, the table talk is great. Um, if you're a bit more experienced, because the first games you will be just quiet, trying to remember in your numbers. So, this is it. I think I covered all of it. And I really hope um, I could inspire you to play the game, because uh, it's one of my favorite small card games. And um, I will do a playthrough, but I'm sure it will take a while because my Cabo partner and me just meet very rarely, like once a month. So, if you have any questions, post below and have fun with the game and see you next time. Bye bye.